الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث العالمين وعلى أله وأصحابه وإل بيت أجمعين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنه قال جاء النخار ابن سيد وكريد بن كعب وبهري بن عمر فقال يا محمد ما تعلموا مع الله إلها غيره فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله بذلك بعثته وإلى ذلك عدعوا فأنزل الله تعالى في كولهم كل أي شيء أكبر شهادة الآية صدق الله العظيم Believe in brothers and sisters We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the author of all creation and we send salam and salutation upon our master our teacher Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Wasallam. Believe in brothers and sisters. There are many problems today that we are facing in our society. We have social problems, political problems, marital problems, and problems of every kind and every sort. As a Muslim, we need to learn how do we deal with issues and problems that we face in life? What has the Quran taught us and what did the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advise us and taught us what we should do when we are faced with those same trials and those same situation in life? One of the issues is the issue where today we are losing our children and we are paying a price and the price that we are paying is we are losing them to something that we consider to be a gift that will help them that they will love something perhaps will make them happy and comfortable and successful but what are the things that you and i we need to give our children so that we can take them out of the situation that they are facing not only in schools but also in the environment that they are living in and the people who they associate with that can become an influence in their life what is it that you and i we need to do like everything else every child every adult every teen has someone who they look up to in life someone they aspire to be like someone who is a successful person that they want to become successful like this person or have a position in society like this person either drive like him talk like him and do business like him and earn like this person we want the same characteristics of this person in our lives so that we can not only accomplish what they have accomplished, but we can accomplish much more than that. And that is, we need to have a good personality. People who are our children today, they want to humil humiliate the best qualities in their life and the attributes. In fact, if I'm to tell you this, 
that 95% of human being behavior is based on looking at role models in their life. For example, children look at their parents. The student look up at the teacher. And the worker, he looks at his boss. And we as Muslims, we look up to the teachings and the role model of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are people today who choose role models from the field of sports and entertainment. Many of us, we, our young children, they looked at soccer, cricket, basketball, and they see these people as being successful people and they want to become like them. They behave like them, they talk like them, they follow them. They see them as successful people, people who possess certain qualities which they want to have. And not only qualities that they have, but also, I want to live their lifestyle and I want to be even better than them. A hero, you admire for his sporting powers and acting abilities. Today our children want to become like those people. And this is what actually I meant that we are losing our children as a result of those people who they see as their role models today who they are following. But the question is, are these people who my son, your son, my daughter, your daughter are seen as their role model? Are they living a good life, a decent life? Are they living a life that you want to live or you want to see your son or your daughter live? There are many of our young people, young sons and daughters today, they want to become like a movie star. You sit with your son and your daughter and ask them what they want to become. You'll be surprised to hear what they will tell you. Many of them, they will follow people who are in sports. Many of them, they want to choose people who are in business. People who are educators. You'd be surprised to know that your son, and that's the reason why we have a lot of young people today, boys and girls, young boys who want to look like Alkaline. They know his songs, they memorize them. Navado. You want to become like who, brother? If you are to sit with your daughter and ask her who she wants to become like, do you want to become like Fatima, Aisha, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an hunna? You will be surprised to hear your daughter. And you will be surprised to see them, the way they are living, the way they dress, the way they conduct themselves in, the, in their homes, and when they are at schools, and in the markets, and in the malls, that they behave the same way they copy, they will model. Or you are following Rihanna. Or you want to become like Lady Gaga. When our children take these people as their role models, people who we know for a fact who have characterless personalities than brothers and sisters, we pay a price. We pay a price and the first price we pay is the moral degeneration among our youths. You see them today believe in brothers and believe in sisters. They have no shame. A young brother, you see the way he dresses. He sees, for example, someone as his role model, maybe a friend, and another person. He sees that everybody likes him. He has a tattoo on his hand, on his neck. So he also wants a tattoo also. This person becomes his role model, so he follows this person. This person, this person bore his, his heir, a young man, and he carries an earring. You also want to do the same. Ma'ad Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our young children and our teenagers from following these Man and woman, be it in the music industry or the athlete in athletic industry, 
that our sons and daughters don't become like them and end up like them. If you are to sit with your son and your daughter and you were to tell them something about the young that lived before us during the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I would like to mention one of the names and that is Saad bin Zayd. Saad bin Zayd he accepted Islam when he was 19 or 20 years old a companion of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who spent his entire life working for his akhirah spreading Islam not only did he learn from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but also he has given his entire life for Islam will my son want to become like him when my son wants to go on in a Dar al Ulum and study so that he become a Hafiz of Qur'an or an Alim where the where this son of mine can serve Deen and can help other young people like himself so that they become role models for other young people. My son wants to become like him? Believe in brothers and believe in sisters. This is the question our parents need to answer today. What do we choose for our children? What education do we choose for them? Nothing is wrong with academics. But we give them every education that they need ex ex except Islamic education when Islamic education is the backbone for the future and the success of our young generation. Zayd bin Awam, a young companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who accepted Islam when he was 15 years old and he used to serve the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a disciple of the Prophet on whom be peace. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he spoke about him, Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, he is my disciple and he will be my neighbor in paradise. And that was an honor for him. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he accepted Islam when he was 10 years old. And he served the Islam also at that young age when he accepted Islam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made this very clear, believe in brothers and believe in sisters, that the young people were the people who supported me and the old people were the ones who turned against me. We speak about Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And we remember when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was among the companions and whom the peace and the Prophet asked the companions who will support me. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu at the age of 12, he stood up and said, I, Ya Rasulullah. Today if I'm to ask a young boy at that age, will you support me, Mawlana Badruddin, in what I'm doing? He will look at you and he will say, I don't want my life to be dictated. I don't want my life to become a life of where I become frustrated. Not knowing what actually frustration is. I don't want to be deprived of fun activities in my life like others do. Just imagine Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he put up his finger and he said, I will support you, Ya Rasulullah. And there was a very difficult time at that stage that Ali had to slept in the bed of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was ready to become a martyr in Islam if the enemies had to kill him when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to leave Mecca. If I am to sit with my daughter and tell my daughter about Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha who will be the queen for paradise or Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha the wife of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was known for her knowledge, her ilm and also her wisdom she will go and ask questions out of curiosity that made us a priceless a priceless resource of knowledge and rulings in the Islamic Sharia. Just imagine 2,000 hadiths traced back to her, ranking her amongst the highest hadith narrators who live after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. But we want our daughters to become like her. Many of us, our daughters, don't even know one hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah, we will wish that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intercede for us when you don't know one word that the Nabi has said. How you expect the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to intercede for you? 
our wives today, we need to ask ourselves this question, are they serving Dean? Or are they serving you and I and our children? Brothers and sisters, it, it is easy to be influenced by people who are around us. And the people that we look up to. And that is what is happening today in our society. It is easy to, to be taken, to take the mannerism and the qualities of other people today. Which we find our young boys and young girls are today taking and living and bringing it in our homes. Many times the role models that they, of, they follow, our, our daughters and our sons, push them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's time for them to perform their salah. They are on the cell phone. And they play on the cell phone games, hours, subhanallah. We are facing that, this problem today in our own homes. Where children sit with their parents and not even having a conversation with them. But they are busy on their cell phone. Doing what? Communicating with someone? Your parents, how important they are in your life when you're not speaking to them? When they're sitting right there in front of you? Many a time the young students in the Dara room will tell us they want to go home on the weekends. To be with their parents. And the parents will always complain when he comes home, Mawlana, he is on his cell phone. The moment he reach home, he sit with his cell phone. What is the cell phone? How important the cell phone is to you? Believe in brothers and believe in sisters. If there is something that we like today, or someone that we like, that we want to become like that person, and that person is pushing us away from Allah and away from deen, then know well. When this hour happened, it's a disaster. There were young companions during the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's time who made tremendous sacrifice for the success of Islam and the safety of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our youths today need to use them as role models so that they can also be an, be an asset for our deen and for Islam. And amongst them, I would like to mention one name of a companion, a young companion of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the name of Amar bin Yasir. After he accepted Islam, his mother accepted Islam, then his father accepted Islam. Abu Jal came and burned their house down. And Abu Jal came to the father and to him and to the wife and asked them if they still want to remain a Muslim and forced them to leave Islam. Just imagine, Abu Jal took them in the open and beat them until blood was coming from their bodies. Not only that, what he did, before the, eye of the eyes of this young companion of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amar bin Yasir, he kicked his father when his father refused to leave Islam until he passed away in front of his eyes. This young son, he sees this happening. But he still hold on to his Islam. What is my son doing today? What is my daughter doing today? And let's imagine, Abu Jahl then turned to the mother and asked the mother, will you leave Islam? Will you denounce Islam? She said, no, never I will. He took a sword and he, and he stuck it in her private part and he killed her. She was the first person who died in Islam as a woman. Believe in brothers and believe in sisters. Am I to tell this to my daughter and my son? What is it that you want to become? Do you want to become like one of these companions? A Numi peace? Sister, do you want to become my daughter? I'm talking to her. Do you want to become a role model? Like these people who lived before us and served Dean, whose name are yet still in the history books that we speak about them after 1440 years. It's amazing what the young companions they did to protect Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the reason why the Nabi on whom be peace had tremendous love for the young people. Believe in brothers and believe in sisters. This is indeed an inspiration for Muslim youth in all generation. And generation to come when we study the life of the young people who lived during the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who made a meaningful contribution to the spread to the establishment of Islam during that time. You to recognize their role in society. And you to protect the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and protect Deen. 
Their contribution is what brought Islam today where Islam is. They see Islam was the only way that will make them successful. And they, will, they stood with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the time of difficulties and hardship to protect the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam believe in brothers and believe in sisters. He used to have young boys who used to come and spend time with him so that he can inspire them and motivate them. And they used to love sitting with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To their brothers and sisters, we see a young boy in the masjid or we go somewhere, we see a young boy, and we see a young girl as a mother. What you need to do as a mother and as a father? What do you need to do as a Muslim? Embrace that young child. You see he's doing something wrong, then sit, talk to him. See if you can get that young boy or that young girl to change. And there are many children today that we see sometimes who are attending school. Muslims and then Muslims also. Where you and I, we can sit and talk and encourage them. The way sometimes they conduct themselves, the type of dress that they wear. And many of you know that we have young girls today who are going to school wearing the uniform that they're going to school with. And no longer three o'clock reaches, they change that uniform. And then they put on another uniform where they go to hang out with their friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our young daughters from that type of lifestyle, believe in brothers and believe in sisters. Our young brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves, the young people, and I say we, it's not because I consider myself to be young, but I consider them to be part of me, that as I'm saying, you as young, and I, as a father to you, we need to ask ourselves this question, how committed are you to your religion? This question can go to any one of us. But what's your age? You're 20 years old. What contribution are you making to Islam? Is your coming for Jummah Salat contributing anything to the growth of Islam? No. Is you wearing a job and a topi in your head contributing anything to the success of Islam? No. Is you become a hafiz of Quran helps you to contribute to Islam? No. You may ask me why. And I will tell you until that half is or that person was knowledge, act on the ilm that they are blessed with and play the role that they have to play after you would have become a half is of Quran or an alim. When you're able to discharge that responsibility then and only, you will be considered, mashallah, a person who become, will become definitely a role model in society. How connected today are our children to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You ask yourself this as a parent. How connect your son and your daughter is to deen? We give them everything except Islam. We teach them everything except Quran. We let them practice everything except the sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know one person, Shaykh, he was asked this question. How close were the companions, which includes also the young ones, were to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I want you to listen to this very carefully. And this message is direct to our young people. Listen to what question the Shaykh was asked by someone. How close were the companions to the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And listen to what the Shaykh said. The Shaykh he said, as close to you are to your cell phone. This is how close the companions they were to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are we close to the teachers of the Prophet on Nubi peace? No. Brothers and sisters, look at in the life of our own children. You don't find a sunnah practice. Thalaba bin Abdurrahman was a young companion. Just imagine he was 16 years old. And he always used to do khidmah, that is, run errands for the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want you to listen to his story and the fear of Allah that he had inside of his heart for his Creator. And ask yourself this question, is my son fearing Allah the way these great young people who we are speaking about them up to this day, fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This companion of the Prophet on Umi Peace used to sit with the Nabi on Umi Peace. He used to learn from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
When he left the Nabi one day and he was walking through the city of Medina, he passed by a house and there was a door that was open. Out of curiosity, he looked inside and he saw a thin curtain blowing and a woman was having a bath. When he saw that, you know, the Quran mentioned to lower your gaze. Immediately, he lowered his gaze. And he lowers his gaze with this feeling of guilt inside of him. That I am a companion of the Prophet of Numi peace. And I am doing such a thing that will displease the Prophet of Numi peace by looking into someone's home, someone's privacy. Astaghfirullah. Out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was, he was so dumb that he thought that there would be verses of the Qur'an that will reveal with regards to what he did. He was ashamed to return to the Prophet of Numi peace the following day because he thinks verse of the Qur'an will come down. With regards to what he did, he looked into somebody's house and he saw a naked person. So he went away very far. The Prophet وسلم, after a few days, the Prophet was, as he was imparting knowledge, teaching the companions, he's looking. And the Prophet knew me peace, he realized, you know, I know this companion. I'm not seeing this companion here. Where is he? Where is this young boy? The companion said, we don't know Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet وسلم, called Umar ibn Khattab تعالى, a serious companion. Let's imagine if you are to put the entire Muslim Ummah today, to be one man, that is Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. No one of us, the whole Ummah cannot be like Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That's the reason why when we stood stand on our member, we mention his name. We say, Ashaddu fi amrillahi Umar. In the whole world, every khatib when they stand on this member, they say the most strong, severe person when it comes to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet called him, Umar come. And then the Prophet called Salman bin Farsi. Two strong companions in peace. Salman bin Farsi and Umar. Both of you go and look where this young boy is. To the many of us, we are seeing young boys. And I'm standing here, I'm seeing many young boys who come for Jummah Salat. Many of them, they used to attend our classes. But I don't see these brothers anymore. Only when I stand here, I'm doing a khutbah, I'll see them in the crowd. You know, brother, I'm glad to meet with you. I know this young brother, but I'm not seeing you in the masjid. What's wrong, man? Oh, I'm busy. I'm doing lesson. No problem. You know, the Darul Ulum actually have a system where you can call us and we can teach you Quran over the phone. We will call you. You don't have to worry. Just give us your number. We'll do that for you because we want you to learn deen. We want you to learn Quran. So where is this young person? You think we care who comes to the masjid? This is today the situation that we are facing today that is, that is destroying our society that we don't care for each other. All we care about is for ourselves. Believe in brothers and believe in sisters, this companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he was he was not there. Prophet sent Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Salman al-Farsi to look for him. They went between Mecca and Medina. And they reached a place where there was a mountain. At the bottom of the mountain, there were some, there were some people, who you call them nomads, they were there. And they were grazing the animals. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Salman bin Farsi questioned them if they know of or see any young person. Any young person who is living who, who around here, they said, yes, we know of a young boy. A young boy who is staying on top of the mountain. And he's here for about 40 days. He comes down from the mountain crying, seeking forgiveness and repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know why. He's just saying all the time, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah all the time. Weeping. And then when he comes, he asks us for some milk. We will give him milk to drink. And then while he is taking it, the milk in his hands, he will cry so much so that, the, 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 that his tears will fall in the milk, but yet still he will drink it. So Umar ibn Khattab asks, when he comes down, they say he comes down in the afternoon. So the companions, they waited there. They grabbed that boy and took that boy. The young boy, when he saw Umar ibn Khattab, he was scared. So Umar ibn Khattab took him and said, you know what, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wants to see you. The companion he was scared, this young companion, what was his age? 16 years old. Imagine during that 40 days, he pined away, became very thin, out of fear of returning to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
because of the sin that he has committed. This companion, he was taken to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet knew the peace. He saw him. The Prophet ﷺ, Nabi ﷺ, he was shot. The Prophet knew the peace, held him and placed him on his lap. And the Prophet ﷺ began to talk to him. The Nabi ﷺ asked him, what's wrong? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I didn't, you didn't see me for a while. And the reason why is because of so and so that took place. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, is there any ayah that revealed with regards to what I've done? The Nabi said, no. This, the Prophet said, but you pine away, you became very thin. He said, out of the fear of Allah that the ayah of the Quran will reveal and my name will remain in the history books. I've committed this sin. So he said, this to the Prophet ﷺ. And there and then the Prophet took his head and read his head on his lap. And the companion of the Nabi Sallallahu this young, Alaihi this young companion, he, there when he was resting his head on the lap of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed away. Subhanallah. When he passed away, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made arrangement for his burial, did his ghusl. And while the Prophet Anubi peace was walking and he was going towards the Qabristan to bury this young boy, the Prophet Anubi peace began to tiptoe. I can remember I mentioned this story in one of my khutbah. The Prophet began to tiptoe as he was walking behind the janazah of this young boy. And the companion of Nubi peace, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they were giving way to the Prophet of Nubi peace and the Prophet is tiptoeing. Ya Rasulullah go. So after, after they came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why, why you was doing this? We saw that you began to tiptoe while you were following the janazah. Listen to the reply of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, that this young boy that passed away, there were so many angels that were following the janazah of this young boy that there was not enough space for me to walk. Allahu Akbar. Why was this so? Because a young man that feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was the position. He get even the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I could not even have space to walk to take the body to the grave. What is my son and my daughter doing today? They got a position like this, believing brothers and believing sisters. What are you doing as a father and as a mother for your son and your daughter to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You as your parents passed away. You're responsible for your brother and your sister. Are you giving them deen? We are failing today. Many of us, we don't accept that but brothers and sisters. And the simple reason why we do not accept that brothers and sisters is because we are failing when it comes to our responsibility. Every one of us, we know the story of how Abu Jahl, he was killed. And just imagine this, Abu Jahl was an enemy of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An enemy of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to subhanallah to this extent whereby he wanted to kill the Prophet to Numi peace. But there were two companions, young companions who in the battle of Badr, both companions by the name of one of them named Mu'az and the name Mu'awwith. Both of them, they were young. And they went on the battlefield and they were looking for, looking for this person who insulted the integrity of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's imagine they even couldn't lift the sword so that they can chop a person. But they were dragging the sword and they were going on the battlefield to fight against the enemy of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they came to one of the companions in whom be peace. And his companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdurrahman. They said to him, uncle, can you tell us where Abu Jahl is? So he looked at them and he said, what do you want with Abu Jahl? You're so small, go back boy, go back. We are fighting, this is war today. This is no joke. This is no game that you're playing on your cell phone. But you get away easy, you lose it, you just switch to another game. You don't switch here, man. There's a sword, a spear, an arrow coming to you. You like play games? This is not games, brother. Change the way you think. You're too young for this. They said, no, we are not too young for this. Abdurrahman, we are too young for this. We are strong in this thing, man. We are deep in this thing. This man, he messed up. He's insulting the one Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't know him. Why? Because we are from Medina and he's from Makkah. We don't know who he is. Let's show us this man. And we're going to deal with him Islamically. <laughs> and I may use the word shariatically. We will deal with this man. Let's show us, show us this man. So the Sahab, Abu Rahman Miyav, he said, you know what, you want to see Abu Jahl? Look at Abu Jahl, he's here. But you're not Abu Jahl, right? Please. Look at him. 
And these two young boys, they could hardly carry their sword. One of them, he took his sword and he chopped the hoof of the horse. And the horse fell. And the other one, he took his sword that he can hardly lift. And as Abu Jahl fell on the ground, he chopped off his neck. Allahu Akbar. Chopped off his neck. They began to run to go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Abu Jahl's son was informed that this boy, two young boys killed your father. And he began to run behind one of them. So he chopped the hand of one of the young boys as he was running. running. And as he was running, the hand that he chopped off, that is the son of Abu Jahl, the young boy was dragging. So this young boy, what he did was, he took his hands and he just removed but that the part of the hand that was hanging 